Hope Church in Atlanta. I want you to put your hands together and welcome Elder Derek Siler. Ignore the 
the most highest command because it hasn't been written in the Ten Commandments. When the most high speaks, it's already been commanded. It has already became law to you. You cannot be ignored. Then it goes on to say, but only from the tree of knowledge of recognition of good and evil, you shall not eat. Otherwise, on that day that you eat from it, you shall certainly die because of your disobedience. We wonder why people around us are dying quite frequently. For we call we have forsaken the most high law. We tend to pick up man's laws and forget about the laws of the Most High. See, that was a condition when you eat from that tree. If I commanded you not to do something and you choose to ignore it, there's a condition that follows for you ignoring my law. So, again, it goes back to the definition of it when I gave you the definition of the law or Torah. He gave direction, he gave instruction, and he gave the law of that land. See, this is only one example of the commandments that he spoke all. Genesis 26 and 5 says, Abraham obeyed my voice. Yeah. And those commandments must have, and he obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments my statutes, and my law. But what that tells you is, even before Moses, Come on. Come on. there were commandments, there were statutes, there were laws to be abided by. So since Abraham obeyed God's voice and kept his commandments hundreds of years before Moses, then surely those commandments must have been known before Mount now we take a look at the written law. Along comes Moses. The most I gave him the written law, which are often referred to as the Mosaic law, which were given to Moses on Mount Sinai after releasing the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. Exodus 19 and 1 says, In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. But before he gave them the real law, he was speaking to them. He was speaking orally to them. But it's the 21 and 1 said that, in the most high spake all these words, saying, which is the beginning of him, orally saying out the laws he commanded them, which proceed in verses 2 through 17. These laws included the commandments, ordinance of living in society, and regulations for worship, requirements for the priest, the sacrifice, the feast, and the, and the temple keeping. Verse 18 picks up and says, And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings, and the noise of the trumpets, and the mountains smoking in. When the people saw it, they moved and stood in the far off. It must have been some kind of voice to speak that loud. It must have made some kind of impact for them to start back in the offer. And they said to Moses, speak thou with us. And we will hear, but let not God speak with us, lest we die. His voice was just that power. He commanded an authority that no one could forsake him. That you knew that it was indistinguishable who was speaking when he spoke. Yeah. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you. God has come in this time, in this designated time, in this appointed time to prove some of you. To prove you that what you say you are is who you really are. To say who you follow is who you truly follow. See, it's easy to, like Moray said, it's easy to follow when things are easy. But when things begin to get tough, when you gotta walk out your door and put on a mask before you walk into a building, you 
you gotta put on a mask. When, when you got to go to the grocery store, you gotta stay six feet apart from someone. See, I don't see anybody having a problem following that law. But this law that we're talking about here is seen above those laws. But yet we contend on forsaking them. 22 says, then, God said unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel. He's still speaking to Moses. But he said, Since they don't want to hear me, I'll speak to you. And you speak to them. See, sometimes when you close your ears to him, he'll send somebody else's body to speak to you. Somebody better catch that this morning. I heard. When you close your ears to him, he'll send somebody else by. He's still looking out for you even when you don't want to hear what he has to say. As in 24, the most high calls Moses up on the mountain. As in 24 and 12 says that, then God said unto Moses, come up to me unto the mountain. And be there, and I will give you tables of stone, and a law and commandments which I have written that thou mayest teach them. Yeah. He said that they don't want to hear this speak. Let me write them down for you. Let me write them down on stone for you. That way they'll get an understanding. If the Moses in the mount receiving instruction only from the Most High for 40 days and 40 nights. I bet to be somewhere with someone that's just steady talking to you. 40 days and 40 nights. Giving you instructions to give to some stiff necked people. And you standing before him and you know they ain't gonna listen to what you have to say anyway. There's something right now that don't want to hear what I got to say. But I'm going to say it anyway. Exodus 31 and 8 says that and he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of cutting communion with him upon Mount Sinai two tables of testimony. Tables of stone written with the finger of God. He wrote his stone with his own finger. It won't shift, it won't fall when he's right in. That way they'll know it's by him. Moses, they'll know that Moses couldn't write with his own fingers. He didn't have enough power. And so Moses come down from the mountain and he sees the children of Israel being stiff that like they have been since they came up out of Egypt. Disobeying the oral laws that the Most High had already given them when they came out of Egypt. Yeah. Being still they like we do sometimes. And then in the 32 and 19, it says that it came to pass as soon as he came unto the camp. Then he saw the cat. And then he said Moses hang the wax hot. And he cast the table out of his hand. And break them beneath the mountain. Moses said, Well, I ain't gonna be here, we deal with these, but these, so they all in the room anyway. So he broke the stone that had just been written by our most high feet. So as the 34, 34 proceeds to Moses, new written tablets of the stone. And it's 34 and 1 says, then, the Most High said unto Moses, he, he who needs two tables of stone like to the first. And I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first table, which thou breakest. Sometimes the Most High has to keep doing things for us over and over again for us to get it right. See, we like to break the law to see how far we can get away with it. We like to do more against the most high sometimes to test it. 
Exodus 34, verse 27 and 28 says that the most high said to Moses, write thou these words. For after the tenor of these words, I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. And he was there with the most high 40 days and 40 nights, and he didn't he, he eat bread nor drink water. He wrote upon the top of the word of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Verse 29 says, It came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand when he came down, and Moses with not the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. And when Aaron and the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone in they were afraid to come by him. The glory was all over him. And Moses came unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned to them, and Moses talked with them. And after all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them the commandments, all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. And so he began to give him what he had written on the tablets of stone. These were the beginning of the written Torah. Now let's get into writing the Father's laws upon your heart. Now that we established that they began all and they were written down but we also know that it didn't work for God's people to do his written law and tablets of stone because their hearts were still part of stone. The law remained, remained external to them, never fully internalized by them. They didn't understand the basic that the law was for their own purpose. For their living. It wasn't for the most high because he's the one that establishes law. For us to obey, to give us instruction. Jeremiah the prophet pointed out, pointed to what the most high would do someday. Jeremiah saw clearly the problem with the stone tablets. The problem was the stony hearts of the people. Their failure to obey, sort of like us today. But he also saw that someday that the Most High would provide a new way to relate to him. Yeah. A new way which would not do away with his law, but would enable people to obey his law. Say, know the Lord for they 
no more. What Jeremiah prophesied when God's faithful messenger was not yet present in his day. Sometimes you can say things that he can give you things that you don't see it happen. But doesn't mean it's not going to happen. God announced at a time, future to Jeremiah's day, that he would make a new covenant. This new covenant would first be with Israel. But it would be not according to the covenant that God made with Israel in Sinai. Throughout the scripture, God reveals his plan of redemption through a series of covenants. From the beginning, he made a covenant with Adam and Eve. But they broke the covenant. He made a covenant with the children of Israel when he brought them out of Egypt, but they continued to break the covenant. A new covenant was promised and needed because Israel did not and could not keep the covenant God made for them in Sinai. The covenant was not designed to just be enough. It was preparation for the new covenant to come. The new covenant brings inner transformation. The law of God was no longer external. God would change the minds and the hearts of those connected to him by the new covenant. The new covenant does not do away or renounce the law. Let's get that understood. Amen. It makes the law closer. And more importantly, the important by sending me to the mind end of the heart instead of a stone or a tablet or a page. It would no longer be like an external one made with the Father, but spiritual and internal and based on an intimate relationship and knowledge of who the Most High is. The new covenant brings new relationship with God. A lot of times we reject that relationship, but he's not forcing himself on you. Those connected to God by the new covenant have a personal and close relationship with him, like never before. See, the stiff-necked children of the old covenant did not want to have that kind of relationship. They still had their mind in Egypt and bondage. The new covenant brings true cleansing from sin. Not the sacrificial system of the old covenant, where we had to take animals and give them to the priest that they'll pray and forgive our sins. A few years after Jeremiah, the prophet Ezekiel heard Yahuwah saying, in 11 and 19, and I will give them one heart. Yeah. And I will put a new spirit within you. And I will take the stony high heart out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh. Ezekiel 36 and 26 says, A, a new heart also will I give you. In a new spirit I will put within you. And I will take away the stony heart of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Y'all all are still in effect today. Don't let anyone tell you that the law was done away with. God has made himself known to us by the law. Then he writes on the heart of his people. The law are not grievous to you. To those who love the Most High God. You are willing to serve and you are willing to do what He has called you to do. You, if you love Him with all your heart, your soul, and your might, you will do everything to prove it to Him, not to man. God never changes. So why would it all change? Those who are stuck on that, they haven't read the Word. Have you not heard? Have you not read? We have direct knowledge of your rule. Every human being in the world, every child in your family, every person that you work with, everybody in your neighborhood has an inherited knowledge of who y'all is. 
according to Romans 1. And it stinks the knowledge of the moral law of God. Romans 1, 16 through 24, and I'm reading from the Amplified Version. 18 24. For Yah does not overlook sin. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all of God in his unrighteousness. Of men who in their wickedness was pressed in sight of the truth. Because that which is known about God is evident within them. Their inner conscience. Y'all know when you were even out of you would always say, Something told me. Something told me not to do this. When you know you were doing wrong. But then when you get yourself caught up, you should have listened to that something told me. Verse 20 says, for ever since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power, and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through his workmanship, all his creation, the wonderful things that he has made, so that they who fail to believe and trust in him are without excuse and without offense. You can walk outside and you can look at nature and know there's someone who created those things. Someone that's a lot bigger than you and I. You can say it was science all you want to, but science can't produce what have you can go outside and look at. Amen. This means, among other things, there are implications when we are speaking to people about the Father, His only begotten Son, in faith, and testifying about who He is. We already know there's something inside of them that already knows who he is. But they have closed their ears to who he is because they choose not to want to follow instruction. They choose not to want to live by the laws that he has set before them. We've all been there at some point in time. That nobody we felt like we couldn't be reached. We've all been there at some place in time when we tried to reach someone and they turned their ears from us. They were good at where they were at at that time. But inside, there was something speaking to them, letting them know if you were telling the truth or not. Yeshua said, when you go out to reach someone and they don't accept your word, just to feed off and keep it moving. My Some of us like to beat people over the head. Try to make them understand. All you gotta do is drop the seed and let him water it. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Good, brother. All right. Hebrews 10, 1 through 18. The old system under the law of Moses was only a shadow. Shadow. A dim preview year after year. But they were never able to provide perfect cleansing. For those who came to worship. If they could have provided perfect cleansing, the sacrifices would have stopped. For the worshipers would have been purified once for all time. And their feelings of guilt would have disappeared. But instead, those sacrifices actually reminded of them of their sins year after year. For it is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin. That is why when Yeshua HaMashiach came into the world, he said to God, you did not want animal sacrifices or sin offer me, but you have given me a body to offer. You were not pleased with burnt offerings or other offerings for sin. Then I said, look, I have come to do your Will, O Yah, as it is written about me in the scripture. For the Messiah said, You do not want animal sacrifices or sin offerings or burnt offerings or other offerings for sin, nor were you pleased with them, though they are required by the law of Moses. Then he said, Look, I have come to do your will. He counseled the first covenant in order to put the second one into effect. For God's will was for us to be made whole. 
by the sacrifice of the body of Yeshua HaMashiach once for all time. Under the old covenant, the priest stands in the ministry before the altar day after day, offering the same sacrifices again and again, which can never take away sin. Mm. But our high priest offered himself to God as a single sacrifice of sin. Good for all time. Hallelujah. Then he sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. There he waits until all his enemies are home and made the footstool under his feet. For by the one offering he forever made perfect those who are being made holy. And the Holy Spirit also testifies this is so, for he said, This is the new covenant. I will make with my people on that day, said Yah. I will put my laws in their heart, and I will write them on their mind. Then he said, I will never again remember their sin as long as deep. Mm. And when sins have been forgiven, there is no need to offer any more sacrifices. He came to take away your sin with the new covenant. But you must accept it as the way, the only way. He has given you that opportunity. He has given you the opportunity to accept his laws, his statutes and commands. To write them upon your heart, to sear them upon your mind, that they will never be forgotten. To not make them grievous for you, but to accept them as they are. God does the decisive work of taking out the heart of the rebellion and putting in the heart that loves the commandments of God. That is the glorious truth of having the law written on our hearts according to the new covenant. I pray that you all have been edified. Be blessed and shalom. Hallelujah.